So I finally got my hands on the brand new RF1 from Wilson and Roger Federer. Now, as you can probably tell, I am quite a big Federer fan. I mean, who isn't? I've been using his rackets for almost 10 years. So as soon as I heard that Wilson were launching a new Federer range of rackets, I was really excited to see what they had to offer. So the first thing that I'm going to speak about is the aesthetic of the racket. Now, I don't think they could have got this any more bang on. I mean, that book cap with his logo is just an awesome touch. And I'm really glad that they stuck with the predominantly black frame. I just think that black makes the racket look so classy. And obviously that ties in pretty well with Federer's image because he's known for being one of the classiest players that's probably ever played. So I think that I can't floor them on what they've done embodying him in a racket. So what are the specs? So it's a 98 square inch head. Now, because this racket was designed for if Federer carried on playing, he would have needed a slight increase in power and spin just to help him shorten points even further to be more efficient. The weight sits at 320 grams, making it slightly lighter than the previous RF97. And in my eyes, a little bit more user-friendly. I'm really glad that they stuck with the 1619 string pattern. For me, the modern game, players are getting loads of spin. You need as much help from the racket as possible. So these are the more in-depth specs for all those racket nerds out there. You know who you are. So now for the fun part. What are my honest thoughts on the RF1 Pro? Now, as I'm not sponsored by Wilson yet, I can give my honest thoughts on this racket. Now for me, having tried and tested a lot of the frames that Wilson has to offer, if I had to sum it up, I would say that it had the power and the spin of a shift, but then also the control and stability of a pro staff. I think it's a really nice blend of a few different Wilson rackets, but then I also think it sits quite nicely in its own unique category. For me, the weight and the balance make it so much more user-friendly than the RF97. I felt like there were a few times where I didn't quite get my body in the right position, but because the racket's so maneuverable, I could just make a quick adjustment with my wrist and bring the ball back into the court. Whereas if you got it wrong with the RF97, you really knew about it. So the sweet spot on this racket felt pretty big. Now, I don't know if that has something to do with the increase in head size or the beam width or even taking out the PWS system, but I was just finding the racket to be really forgiving. I mean, we were training in pretty difficult conditions. It was really windy and I was actually playing at Wimbledon on their hard courts, which are pretty responsive, pretty bouncy, which is normally a single-hander's worst nightmare. But I really felt like this racket held up. I felt like it was easy for me to generate power, generate spin. I will admit at the beginning, I did find it a little bit hard to control the ball because of the increase in power. Now I normally use a 97 RF, so I did have to make a few adjustments, but after I'd bedded it in, I started to really enjoy playing with this racket. So what did the RF1 add to my game? Now, apart from the obvious slight increase in power, slight increase in spin, the main thing that I got from this racket was how maneuverable it was and just how it allowed me to play. So I was able to stick to the baseline a little bit more and take a few more balls on. Because of the weight and the size of the sweet spot, it meant that my contact was just slightly more guaranteed. So I could take on balls that were coming in quicker or bouncing deeper pretty confidently. So for me, this racket is very versatile. I could actually see it suiting quite a lot of different game styles. So what's it like on the defense? So going back to that maneuverability, when you're on the stretch, you haven't quite got your body behind the ball. This racket really helps you out. I found that when I was pinned in the backhand corner, it gave me that slight bit of zip on the slice which allowed me to work my way back into the rally a little bit more, even off balls that were coming in heavy with a lot of spin, quick. So on the attack, I actually had quite a lot of fun really letting the ball go with this racket, just really getting some speed through the ball and stepping in and crunching it. And I was honestly just loving hearing the sound of the racket, just really solid on contact. And it was quite satisfying to hear it as well afterwards, just through the amount of speed that I was getting through the ball. 
and how much I was really able to let it go. So how did it perform at the net? Now, before this practice, I had this racket strung up to exactly my specifications, 57 pounds with head links tore at 130 gauge, which is a pretty stiff setup. Now, I will admit that this racket did take me a little while to get used to regarding the power. And as the volleying isn't the strongest part of my game, it did take me a few minutes to get my range. But when I did, I felt that it was pocketing the ball really nicely and I didn't really have to work too hard to get that much pace on my volleys and I found that especially on my first volley it actually made things easier as I was getting that little bit more pace for free I was just finding a little bit more depth just getting my body behind the ball almost just letting the racket do the work so the smash again similar to the volleys just that little bit of extra pop for free I felt like something that was quite noticeable was my slice smash, which is something I don't really hit that often. But I noticed with that added little bit of spin, it was really taking the ball off the court. There wasn't a huge amount of difference between my regular smash. So I was really interested to see how this racket would affect my serve. Now, my serve is probably the strongest part of my game. There have been matches where I've hit over 20 aces and I've hit serves into the mid 130s. So could this racket give me any more? And to be honest, it didn't add a huge amount to my first serve. I'd say the pace was very similar to what I got on the RF 97. I probably got slightly more spin on the body serves and the wide serves than I normally would do. But the two areas that I can really see this racket succeeding on serve for me are the overall efficiency and comfort I feel like I'd be far less likely to get injured using this racket on serve because it was just so much more easy to use. And then also the big difference that I noticed was the second serve. How much more spin I was able to get. It really seemed to bite the ball and kick when it hit the court on the other side. So, will I switch? Honestly, I'm not sure yet. I did really love playing with this racket. And as far as I'm aware, they are discontinuing the RF-97, so I will have to switch at some point. But there are a few more frames that I have to try out first, and I'll be filming reviews on all of them. If there are any frames that you want me to try out, let me know in the comments. And if you have any feedback, as always, I really appreciate it. So feel free to drop some below. And if you can subscribe to my channel, that would really help my journey and allow me to keep bringing you tennis content. So thank you for watching again, and I'll see you next time.